Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Underrail Expedition with me, Bring It Down. So, I'm actually going to hold off on talking to Norman real quick. I'm going to go talk to the, uh, the JKK receptionist. The man stops typing and looks at you. Welcome to JKK headquarters, Mr. Brondon. Mr. Brondon, nice to meet you. My name is Van. How can I help you? Uh, what can you tell me about JKK? JKK is the major broadcasting organization in Core City. We make sure every arena match is brought to the people of both South and North Underrail. Even the poorest zoners get the chance to experience the brutality of the arena. Moreover, for those more interested, or for those interested in bet betting on the arena matches, JKK is the organization responsible for it, and much more. Without JKK, Core City would not be what it is today. I'm looking for some work. Very good. And uh, what kind of work are you looking for? I don't know. What do you have available? We might have something. If you'd excuse me for if you'd excuse me for a brief moment, I'll see if we have if we happen to have anything available. Man. Van presses a button on his headset and starts speaking to someone. You pretend not to listen, but you can hear your name being mentioned a couple of times. The man remains almost expressionless, yet you somehow catch that there's something wrong. After several minutes, this conversation ends. Mr. Brondon, I'm very sorry. But we can't offer you a working position here at JKK at the moment. The reason for this is, if I've been told correctly, that you're already working for a different organization. I apologize again, and wish you a dominating day. Well, thank you for your time. Goodbye. Alright, I just wanted to verify that you couldn't join multiple factions at the beginning. I was going to try and work out a way to... ...do multiple faction quests up until, you know, I couldn't anymore. But you can't, so... Ken Ho, what in could I do for you? I notice the guy outside also speaks Advent Tongue. Ah, yay. Rick, gentlemen. He's my student and a bright young man, I must say. I started teaching him shortly after I arrived to Core City. I rented this how to refer to it without making it seem better than it actually is space here. And I put up an Advent 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 Tongue course ad. Rick, gentlemen, was the first one to respond to the ad. He was the only one to respond to the ad. He clearly realized the importance of Advent Tongue. Or Adva Tongue. I keep saying Advan Tongue, like Advantage. But it's Adva Tongue. Or Adva Tongue. I don't know. Unlike other denizens of this linguistic cesspit. I mean, even despite my disapproval of Common Tongue, uh, the things I've. The things I've heard here make my ears bleed and my mind wail in agony. Being hammered in the head with hardcore and dominating every two seconds is only the beginning of the story. Pipeworker. Atrocity. Adva Tongue is an official language of. Well, even a station, let alone a region will have to wait. However, I hope that goal will be achieved one day. If that means teaching one student at a time, then I better persevere. And what can you tell me about Core City? It's just like most South Underrail stations, linguistically perverted to the point of creating an impression that commoners who live here are struggling with their very own language. And I thought common tongue in its untainted form was abhorrent enough. I just read that one day, the way commoners converse here won't slither into my own speech in some perf perfidious way. Indeed, coming here is a much mind-clonking experience. <laughs> if it wasn't for my student, I would have gone insane listening to those JKK workers discussing their trims and other mental thing or menial things. What can you tell me about the arena? Gah, that buffoonery? Buffo buffoon so hard. <laughs> Please, I don't wish to speak about it. The arena is the sort of thing that appeals to only the most primitive southerners, which is the majority. And what can you tell me about JKK? JKK. As soon as I open my doors, I am greeted by the sight of their headquarters. They broadcast that perfectly dreadful arena, feeding it to the unwashed masses. On top of it, they organize betting to further relieve the poor creatures' already barren pockets. Their heads are already desolate, so why not their pockets too? I'd rather not have anything to do with JKK. Do not do. <laughs> What a silly language. And I have no better opinion of Cortec or Praetorian security for that matter. Primitive lot. And what can you tell me about the oligarchy? I haven't personally met the few that the few that in rule. The oligarchs, that is. My information on them is limited, I'm afraid. But my personal experience, mostly from observation, but also from other unfortunate incidents, dictates that I can only draw a single conclusion which is that they are managing the city in a selfish, incompetent, and rather oppressive manner. Gah, at least no one disturbs me anymore. 
If we ignore the environment itself, that is. Alright, uh, well, observing you so close, Norman gentleman. Good, you're, le you're learning much. Yeah, you can say that. I right, let's go talk to the Chartists. Mr. Percival. Alright, one moment. You find yourself in front of a man wearing beautifully ornamented robes. He stands call, t call. He stands tall and confident, with a chiseled face and radiant green eyes most would kill for. What is most striking about him and his is his unusual stare. It appears to be constant, never changing, neutral. But every time you see it, you perceive it in a different manner. One moment, it strikes you as benevolent, wise, even paternal. The other, it makes you feel exposed and apprehensive. He projects his voice without effort, and speaks in a calm, non-rushed manner with a slight drag at the end of each sentence. Chert is evolution, brother. I am Minister Percival, and I'm a member of the Institute of Chert. Fear us not, for we mean no harm, even though our appearance might suggest otherwise. Does he have... That's not hair. Is he a Twi'lek? He might be a Twi'lek. Uh, the robes look pretty neat, don't worry about it. Yeah, try not to uh, have any prejudice based on appearance. Uh, prejudice is destructive to humans. I'm glad you haven't fallen in, in that trap. Of course, if what you say is true. Still, one can't fail to acknowledge the potential deterring nature of our clothing. Our uniforms are usually described as disgusting or creepy. But as I've said, prejudice can rob someone of wisdom. On the other hand, we have an unmistakable and distinct appearance, something we embrace to symbolize the regenerative cycle of Chert itself. Now it lies in deep caverns formless, rebuilding itself. Once ready, it will manifest into a new, improved being, adapted to this world. Our robes honor this alteration, for we too are undergoing change, and once the robes are removed, we will reveal our new, improved form. Alright, sounds interesting. What can you tell me about this institute of Chert you belong to? The Institute of Chert is an institution devoted to Chertism and was founded by Iodine, who first discovered Chert nearly a century ago. Chertism is an ideology centered around Chert, a being that possesses and brings us immense knowledge and is the key to advancing, evolving the human race to new heights. Literally. He smiles. Scientific investigation lies behind everything we do. We study the creature and its complete genetic makeup and learn from it. Then we apply the knowledge in practice. Uh, tell me more. Take what to your imagination. Good. Shirt exists as a physical being. Observable, tangible. You're not able to fully communicate with us in its current state. But it gifted us with its flesh, and through scientific investigation, as I've already mentioned, we discovered that what was previously thought to be junk DNA actually contained a genetic code that serves as a sort of backup for the creature. The explanation is lengthy and requires a bit of time, and will. Well, that's fascinating. Glad you're finding it interesting. He makes a brief pause, then continues. You know what? We held lectures about Chertism here in Core City. If you want to learn more, come and attend one of these lectures. I think that's a more effective way to comprehend the subject. Proven. He smiles. Have you perhaps met Professor Norman Heck? Indeed I have, unfortunately. In my opinion, that man is a pseudo-intellectual. While he might possess certain knowledge, I can't dispute that. His arrogance is the only cause for creation of that abominable language he calls Advatung. According to his own words, Advatung is supposed to be a linguistic paradise. Yet it's a mockery, a, dev a devolution. Please, just observe the construction, the pronunciation. It pains me to even think about it, or think of it. And what can you tell me about the oligarchy? The oligarchs allowed us to be here under their protection. We're allowed to propagate knowledge uninterrupted. While there are certain matters regarding them which can be commented on, I'd rather avoid doing so. It would be rude to our hosts, in my opinion. Have you perhaps been to Hardcore City Bar? I haven't personally been to this place, but some of my brothers and sisters have. It seems very devolved. They do it mostly to discuss Chertism with as many people as possible, which is understandable just due to the popularity of it evolved. Well, degenerate, decadent, something that has passed into a worse state. 
but is a common expression among us Chartists. What I found peculiar, though, is that the missionaries absorbed several local terms there. For example, I've heard phrases like, that's freaking hardcore, or zone out, being uttered by them in a warring number of occasions. This trend continues, a certain form of intervention might be necessary. You understand Core City's slang sounds, very unfitting for a Chartist. I met one of your guys in Foundry, but he seemed pretty derailed. If he seemed, um, derailed, then he probably is. Help you realize that some madman's behavior shouldn't reflect on the doctrine of the group he claims to be a part of. If you want to learn about the true magnificence of Chartism, seek me or any other proper Chartist missionary. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'd like to attend the lecture you were talking about. Very well. Or as some of us Chartists would say, Apex. We'll be holding a lecture quite soon, in fact. If you wait just a bit for others to arrive, we will be able to begin. Alright, let's begin the lecture. The loading times in this game aren't long enough for me to sip my coffee. Anyway. Thank you all for taking the time to be here today, and for putting your trust in us in the midst of all that has been happening lately in Core City. The Corrupted Faceless are known for ravaging everything they lay their dystrophic eyes on, and us Chartists know that very well. We have a long history in dealing with those monsters, and have always opposed their foul ways. Okay, I'm gonna take a stab in the dark here. So what I think their conflict is going to come from is that the Chartists believe in evolution through flesh, uh, changing your, your flesh, your genetic makeup. The Faceless seem like they're more technologically focused. They like to advance and evolve through technology, at least according to their appearance. I don't know anything about the Faceless. This is all just, just me guessing. At least that might be one of the differences. I don't know if it's going to if that's going to be where the conflict comes from, because uh, there's also that cube that I don't know anything about. Anyway, uh, we understand that during hard times, it can be very difficult. Oh wait, I've no, I've not read this. <laughs> Sorry, everybody, I'm a little little frazzled this morning. Uh, we understand that during hard times, it can be very difficult to put trust in something you're not familiar with. Yet amazingly. More often than not, dire situations are the cause for people to explore alternative options. Uh, believe my words, during this lecture, you will receive nothing but absolute, undi undiluted truth regarding the Institute of Chert. Chertism and what it can offer to you. Let us begin. First of all, I feel it is important for me to say that we are not a religious cult, as we are commonly accused of being. We don't worship imaginary beings, gods, devils, or the like. Our robes do not exist so that we may intimidate. They have a symbolic value, which will be explained later. Everything I tell you during this lecture is based on hard evidence, on research, on scientific investigation. Every claim here is backed up by careful and extensive research performed within the Institute of Chert, under the watchful eye of Iodine, its founder. But what is Chert exactly? Chert is a single multicellular organism discovered by Iodine almost a century ago in deep caverns, and is suspected to be one of the oldest living organisms in existence a primordial being. It is completely formless, but exists in a state of regeneration which it undergoes whenever the environment it lives in greatly changes, requiring a different form to survive. Iodine discovered it during its current regeneration cycle, and the creature allowed him to study it. What he learned during these studies was truly magnificent. First, I need to discuss the term non-coding DNA, sometimes referred to as junk DNA. Non-coding DNA, in simple terms, are DNA sequences of an organism which do not encode protein sequences and therefore have no direct biological functions. For example, almost 98% of human DNA is non-coding, with only around 2% of the total genome being responsible for what you are, how you look, and how you behave. Chert, only 0.5% coding, but there is a neat little secret. Its non-coding sequences serve as a biological backup for the creature to rebuild its coding DNA. If damaged by radiation, mutations, or simply by a large number of replications, and modify and also adapt it for specific needs. In short, it can undergo a process of regeneration and adaptation until it builds itself anew and perfects itself for the world it, in it, the world it lives in. Iodine found this remarkable, but even more remarkable is the fact that his, this knowledge allows us to do the same thing with humans as well. 
I think you say his name right. It could be Edine. I think it's Iodine though. Uh, the Institute of Chert was soon born with a single unified idea. To direct the evolution of the human race. Chertist ideology reflects just that. We will preserve Chert and the valuable knowledge it bestowed on us so that we can elevate ourselves to new heights. We live in a desolate world, and the environment is not our only enemy. Just look at the recent events and you will understand my point perfectly. Institute of Chert gravitates toward adapting to the human race to, to move beyond these dark caves and reach the surface. Again, everything I just told you can be backed with solid, proven facts. Chert is evolution, and evolution is Chert. One cannot go without the other if we are to stop ourselves from our ultimate demise. And with that, I will end this short lecture. I know you have many questions, brothers and sisters. I know that these questions can and will be answered. But to get to these answers, one would need to travel to the Institute of Chert in Upper, in upper Underreal and become a Chertist. Only then can you have access to all, all of the knowledge we possess and help us further understand Chert. To help not just us Chertists, but our whole race. Please understand that Chert is important to us, and so it is to you, and we must propagate this knowledge to all who are willing to listen. As Iodine once stated, we can and we must. I hope you've learned some valuable information during this lecture. That is all for now. Thank you, and Chert guide you. Hmm. Uh, Chert is evolution. How may I help you? I wanted to talk to you about the lecture. I see, brother. Tell me, did you enjoy it? I thought it was rubbish. It was rather interesting and really got me thinking. I'm very pleased to hear that. As I've already mentioned during the lecture, if you want to have unlimited access to our knowledge, you could visit us in Upper Underreal. Lines and lines of people stand in the Institute's courtyard, waiting to be accepted as members of our institution. While the competition is strong, those who possess certain traits will always have an advantage. Please consider it, brother. All right. Interesting. Okay. I like I like the concept of the Institute of Chert, how they worship an actual thing they found. All right. So I need to find Joe DiMaggio. No, uh, whatever his name is, Joe De Pacini. I'm going to start, I'm going to go talk to Mo, and then I'll go to the Hardcore City Bar, which is probably the first place I should go. Oh yeah, and we can talk about Zilla. Everyone likes eating at Mo's. Oh, what can you tell me about Zilla? Oh wait, I can also talk to John the Beautiful. My bad. I should talk to him about this. Oh, Zilla. Oh, there's not much to say about that the real woman. She used to have a stall just across from mine. I don't even know why she chose that location, since I already had mine set up here. She had nothing special to offer, and yet she wanted to compete. I had more customers, naturally, because my food doesn't taste like it was soaked in siphoner fat, but that crooked teeth nightmare started acting all derailed. She yelled at me for somehow stealing her customers. I mean, what? She didn't pass the opportunity to kick my stall a couple of times. The Praetorian security enforcers got her out of here soon after that. All hardcore. She had to move to Upper Underrail Station, from what I've heard. Meh, I don't care anyway. Good riddance. Huh. Yeah, cause she made it sound like there was a, uh... What does he have spinning right here? Is that meat? Oh, I can investigate it. The crispy glistening meat beckons you closer. Huh, neat. Alright. Let's go talk to... Uh, John the Beautiful. It would be cool if uh, after you do the Zone Rats quest. Actually, I should go up there and see if there's anything to steal. But after you do the Zone Rats quest, you could go to them, and either Sneaky, Gorski, or uh, Dan could help you with other quests around Core City. So I feel like you should be considered a part of their uh, 
their gang, you know. You have to take the black crawler base back. So I think oh, that'd be a neat little touch. Like, hey, I need help killing this guy. Send Sneaky with you, you know? He looks around and whispers. Hey, pal. Got food ready? Specific information. That's what I'm saying. Prepare some food and let's get started. I'm looking for Joe De Pacino. That's easy. It'll cost you one eel sandwich. My tummy yearns for it. Well, here you go. Give him one eel sandwich. Come here, baby. No, not you. I was talking to the sandwich. Sometimes the digestion is better if you talk to your food. Anyway, about Joe. Just head north of here, and you should see a guard to the right, on a platform. There's like this small metal shack there. The guard is one of De Pacino's men. You find out the rest, pal. He laughs. Nasty buggers. Also, I heard they do business with Cortec. Dirty business. There's some free info. He bites into the sandwich, and soon after an expression of bliss appears on his face. Oh, this one's good. Alright, cool. So north. I remember that uh, shack. I remember these shack. I don't remember exactly where it's at. There's the guard. He's like, hey, you can't go in here. And here it is. Right, let's quick save and see what we can do about this. We're also in a... I don't see a controlled... Where's it at? Let me go back over here. Where's that symbol? Oh, here it is. In an uncontrolled zone. Which is important when doing business with these guys. By that, I mean... Yeah, no, I'm gonna fight you. Well, I regret every second of that. Alright. Come here. Okay. Extraordinarily underwhelming. I wonder if there's a way to get in here non-violently. Well, I guess I could have snuck past him. But who's got time for that? Alright, quick save, and then uh, in we go. Alright, I'm gonna quick save again, because I have a feeling when I go down here, I'm gonna immediately start a fight. Yep, that's what I was afraid of. Alright, so there's a power box I can go turn off. That'll reduce their uh, accuracy. Aggro, no, ho no hostilities. Perfect. Well, that doesn't bode well. That's just swap spears. Oh well. We'll get him this time. A lot of laser pistols, which sadly, the electronics merchants very rarely want to buy those. Right, I'm going to quick save again, turn on my shield, and we're going to sprint into this, uh, this room. Oh, there he is. Oh, this isn't going to be too bad. Should have probably charged that up. Oh well, we'll make up for it. Get over here and yell at everybody. <laughs> Do 
You know what? I'm gonna reload this real quick. I need a I need EMP grenades. Cause screw dealing with the uh Alright, let's quick save again. Actually let me eat something as well. They all have different damage types, so I think I might just increase my health by twenty. Just something to burn through some of my resources. Oh yeah, charge my darn taser. That's a big deal. Alright. Once again, quick saving, and then back into the fray. Let's go. Aha! I don't like how he went uh, last there. So I need to take damage after he uses that on me, so I don't... Well, I'm back now. I wonder, was the EMP gonna uh, get rid of the charge in his laser pistol? That's annoying. That's a lot of damage. Alright. I kinda wanna hit these two with this. But I guess I'll just hit him. <laughs> How unlucky. Alright. Flashbangs may have been a good idea as well. Also, cutting back this way probably would have been a good idea. I think that's what I'm gonna do now. Come and get me, guys. I'm gonna go hide around the corner and force them to me. I will be fatigued, but I don't think that's gonna make a difference here. Oh, there's another door right there. Didn't know that. Wait, why didn't he get another turn? What? Once again, not a fan. Right, I'm gonna go hide around this corner and force him to me still. There we go. A little concerned. Let's try and shield bash him. Yeah, I do suck. Alright, I should be able to taste him this turn, so no big deal. And then, uh, give me the old stabby stab. Alright. Quite enough. Okay. Let's recharge all of my spears and stuff. It makes sense though, because if he deals with Cortec, he, he had, again he had access to all those uh, energy shields and stuff, so. Tommy gun, an ancient looking heavy 44 caliber submachine gun. Some of the materials from which this gun is made feels feel like nothing you've encountered before. That's neat. Tungsten steel boots, probably worth a decent amount, right? Maybe not bad. What's my inventory looking like? Ooh. You know what? I don't need to grab all this stuff. Just grab. 
Again, I might grab all this stuff and go and sell it off camera. I didn't see that barrel over there earlier. So to assume that it's locked. So my quest was only to deal with to kill him, right? Advanced patching kit. Right. Mercenary group in Corsi led by Joe Pitch, you know, eliminate him in fortress traffic, yeah. So I don't have to turn any of the stuff that I'm finding in. Old world old old world booze bottle. Cannot talk. Alright. 110. I've oh, got 113. I think this is the highest level lock pick or lock that we found. Yeah, that's interesting. All right. Well, I think I'm gonna call the episode here. Well, I'm not gonna carry all this stuff back. It's a little much. Like, that's not worth anything. That's not worth anything. Is it worth 10,000? Well, it has a value of 10,000. That, that's probably worthwhile. Some of these armors and stuff probably on. That's definitely not worthwhile. Um, you know what? This is Y'all don't need to watch this. I'm going to call the episode here, and the next one we will turn in this quest to... Uh, Lieutenant Stratford with the Praetorian security and continue questing for them. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode.